welcome to another sketch to scrapbook page. I'm Shmel Lane and today I have a five photo sketch. This is another another layout design designed to help you mix the uh, square photos that you might take with your phone with four by six photos that you might take with a camera that isn't a phone. So this time it includes one portrait and one landscape four by six photo and three squares that combined make up the same width as the landscape photo. So I've printed them just shy of two inches square so that I have room for a little margin in between them and I'm going to be using a variety of of papers and supplies here. I haven't pulled out a whole lot, just um, a few things to get me started and then if I need some extra embellishments as I go I'll add that. I have two older sassafras papers that I'm going to use. This one for the background which is a bit of a um, fabric texture with some watercolored paint and I liked how the stitched lines up here fall in line with where the journaling is placed on the sketch. And this floral print that always reminds me of vintage sheets. Now, part of my paper choice came from the people in the pictures. I have um, quite a few times where I've used sassafras papers with pictures of this particular friend and her family. So I decided I would go ahead and use that as a great excuse to use some of my favorite sassafras, sassafras papers. And um, also this newer pattern paper from Cosmo Cricut. This is um, from their current summer collection called Sunnyside. Um, not a huge fan of this uh, yellow here, but I love this side with that same yellow just in a really small bit. So I still might be able to use some of the other side uh, cut into smaller pieces. I like it as a as an accent rather than a full sheet and liked the cream, pink, and white mix of this particular pattern. Uh, thickers from American Crafts and uh, this is from another Cosmo Cricut uh, sheet, but just um, some die cuts from the cut apart sheet that starts as 12 by 12 but I've cut it into various boxes and some stamps from Amy Tangerine and I've pulled out a few different tapes uh, a pink, a blue, and a gray to match uh, all those supplies. So I'll go ahead and get started and with a bit of luck it'll all come together pretty quickly. I'm starting by assembling the photo block on the pattern paper that I want to mat the block of photos and just one little uh, tip here for getting things spaced out correctly and that's that I always if there's going to be three spaces I place the outside two first and then you can come back in and place the middle one in between. You will see here that um, I've made the margins a little larger than I would have expected. I should have printed these square photos actually just a little bit bigger than I did. So I'm going to make a little bit of a change here in, even though that was my advice to um, place the center one f um, last so that you get the margin the same either side. In this case I'm going to move things over so that I keep all these margins the same it does mean that I'm going to have this one lighter, wider margin here on the side and what I'm going to do is plan in that I'll have to add some embellishment over the top there to make that not so obvious. Then when I go to cut this photo mat I need to remember that in this particular design the bottom edge is wider because the title is going to um, fit on the space there below. So to judge how wide I just want to have a look at the thickers and see how tall they're going to be and then I can make a little dent in the paper to know how wide I want that bottom border to be. Now, my pattern paper for the block that surrounds the photos and the pattern paper in the background are a very similar t uh, c color and tone so I've added the blue pattern around the edge as a contrasting mat and then I can go ahead and attach this to the layout. I did think a little bit about adding more mist but because there's um, quite a lot of mist incorporated in the pattern paper itself it's it's there in the design I didn't add it and um, I figured that I could just leave what's there rather than adding more. So I'm going to uh, go on the basis that what's there is already perfectly in place and if I add more it might all go horribly wrong so I'll go ahead and stay with what's in the design. Then I'm ready to add my title. Now on the um, sketch there's this lighter box that goes all the way across the page underneath the title lettering and that could be vellum, it could be ribbon. In this case I'm going to use some tape and I'm not just going to do one line all the way across. I'm going to do a few lines so that I incorporate the different patterns but I'm going to run them off one side of the page but not have them go all the way to this edge. So I think if I put the neutral in the middle, I'm going to put the 
aqua at the top and the pink at the bottom. The darkest color at the bottom to kind of anchor the whole design. So I'm running it off one edge of the page. But then just tearing it and adding that bit there. And then the neutral next in the stack. And I don't want them perfectly straight, so a little bit of an ang angle. Not a lot, just a tiny little bit. And then bring in the blue at the top. There we go. And I may end up repeating that up here, perhaps, as my uh, element that could cover up that extra bit of margin that I have on that photo mat that I didn't particularly want in the design. And my letter stickers can go right over the top of the tape so that I can spell out my title. These are from the um, American Crafts Mayberry line, I'm pretty sure. They're called Junebug, and this is in the salmon font, which is quite a vibrant pink. On the sketch, there's a little room for embellishment to the side of the title, so I've left a bit of room here, and it's actually quite a big title because they've added in not just one large title, but also a subtitle in smaller letter stickers. Those are Doodlebug letter stickers that come in a set like this with all the different fonts in the same color. And then I want to bring this idea of the letter stickers on the washi tape up to the top corner of the page as well. So I think I'll make an adjustment from the sketch where the sketch has this uh, this bit of embellishment along the top line of the page, I'm going to bring it further down just a little bit below the journaling, the journaling up a little bit higher. So I'm going to repeat the washi tape off the edge of the page, but just coming to the edge of the photo here in the same order. So pink at the bottom, then the gray, and then the blue. And I'm going to add the um, the girl's initials to the top of that. And that just showed you the dangers of printing at home versus properly developed prints. Um, I normally use prints that have been developed by a photo developer that uses the same technology that we used when we had film. Um, that they're actually printed on photo paper. It's just a digital um, process of getting there instead of uh, the film. But that they are uh, processed that way. They're not just printed ink on paper. But because I was printing these at a, a specific size to work on this sketch, I printed them on my home printer. And though, though my home photo printer has great quality to the, the color and the images. I, I love how they look. That's absolutely no problem. The finish is different and if you stick something to it and bring it back up again it's going to tear all the color off. The paper will be fine but there won't be any color. So when I added the tape I'm so used to just pulling it back up without it being any trouble and I did that and I had pulled all the color off the print. So just uh, pros and cons of different types of printing. So I'm going to use my um, thickers here again to put their initials up here and trying to see how I could, it's going to be a tight fit between the edge and the edge of the paper and the edge of the photo. Let's see if I can get them to just fit in there and then use a turquoise ampersand over the top and that's that means I can cheat a little on the spacing. If I'd used the ampersand in the thickers, I'd need to spread it out and have three characters wide. But this way, I can have just two characters wide and put the ampersand over the top of the two letters. I'm going to go ahead and get my writing down here so that I have um, I make sure that I have that written down before I add any more embellishments so that I don't run out of room, and then the embellishment will be my final step. All my journaling is here and here, so now I know I can embellish in the space that remains and not run out of space for the important stuff. I wanted to add these two little die cuts um, up here and just add a pop dot to the top of them to give them a little bit of dimension and tuck them in. This is going to be a fine balance between 
keeping the word legible and not going off the edge of the page, but it should fit just right. And then a little gray heart next to it. Then I wanted to work in this space here and have something that would bring this grouping of embellishments down to this group. So I'm going to use some stamps. I don't want this stamp to be really obvious. I want it to be more subtle and I want it to introduce the journaling here. So I'm using pink so that it shouldn't be um, a bright contrasting shade. It should be right there in tune with the colors that are already used there. And then I want to do the same thing with a different design. I don't want to just repeat the, the word hello at the top and the bottom of the layout. So I'm going to pick a different stamp from the set but use the same ink pad and bring that down here so that I am, am bringing that same idea of the subtle tone on tone stamping. So use this little elephant with the love heart and pop that into the little spot there. There's also some teeny tiny hearts here that I thought I might dot around as a little finishing touch type embellishment and maybe do those in a color that will offer a little bit more contrast. To finish this page, I just want to bring in something to this bottom corner that will have a little bit of dimension. And I actually still had some sassafras stickers as well, so I thought this would be a good place to bring those out. I liked the idea of bringing some yellow down to this corner, so I have a yellow floral sticker to add there, and I'll just add some pop dots for the dimension part, and then I think maybe bring um, a little sticker up here to the top as well, just so it will have those two things in common. And I think I'll end up covering up my little uh, elephant there. I should have stamped him maybe over to the side. I might be able to just fix that and add the little elephant back in. So change of plan because I think he'll look better on the outside edge of the page rather than and in the inside and then with the flower on the outside. And that'll be our little secret because now it's going to be covered up. And then perhaps one of these stickers will make a good addition just here. So I have this yellow um, flower, or well it's not a flower, it's a, a yellow doily circle and maybe something that's little pink. Maybe one of these brighter. I think the little dot. So I think the dot on this side to add a bit of contrast there. And then the circle on this side. And I'll add that one on top as well. The other option I was considering there was putting it underneath the edge. And, but I think it will have a nicer finish with the layer on top with the doily being the layer on top and that little bit of ink around the edge to shadow it. And I did add those little tiny turquoise hearts just dotted about. So I think I'm going to call that one finished right there. So that is um, this week's sketch, which you can find at chamel.com, and you can print this out and uh, have a go at the sketch yourself with your own photos. If you make a page based on the sketch, I'd love to see what you do with it. Use any supplies in any style you like. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you soon. Happy scrapping!